Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is May 6, 2010, and this is Day 9 Daily number 1111. Um, this thing is currently not on the air. Ah. Hmm. Hey, there it is. It's actually on air. All right, cool. Whoa, sorry about that. That was a pretty long delay. Um, yeah, that was actually... All this is uh, an issue happening on my end. My um, Flash Media Live encoder just sort of tanked on me, so whoopsie-daisies. But all right. Cool, we're back. We're finally here. Uh, for any of you who are watching on On Demand and are curious what the hell happened, uh, I was trying to do this cast at the start previously, but it completely fell apart and everything went wrong. So I just rebooted and we're just going to give it another shot and hopefully everything will turn out a lot better. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right back into the game. We're going to redo it from the beginning. We have very high frames per second now. Everything is much, much, much smoother. Look at that. Oh, yes, that quality is fantastic. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Um, but we do have Lucifron spawning here in the bottom left as the uh, yellow Terran. And in the right, we have Haypro spawning as the red Zerg. So for any of you who are watching live, sorry about this, but I'm going to repeat myself a lot to make sure that the video is great quality for anyone watching on On Demand. So anyways, let's give this another go around. So um, anytime you're trying to do some sort of build order, the most important thing is that you have a solid beginning, middle, and end, that you have a good set of transitions throughout your entire build order, because too often you'll end up with players who do some sort of goofy opening and get in their opponent's face or something like that, and they'll feel really happy about it, but then they'll end up falling apart in the later stages of the game, and we're going to see a great way to play by Lucifron, uh, how he transitions out of a very early Reaper harass, but into a very, very, very solid middle game uh, plan and ends up, you know, just continuing to put the hurt on in the late game. We're going to see a lot of variety as Lucifron is going to do this on a wide variety of maps. For any of you who, uh, once again, are watching this at the on demand, um, all my videos are going to be uploaded directly after this to day9tv.blip.tv. So that'll be beginning with uh, Day 9 Dailies number 108 and 109, which um, were the Noni Phoenix games that have had a lot of requests about. Um, yeah, those are going to be on right after this. I literally finished indexing them like 10 minutes before I went live, which was part of the reason that everything got screwed up. It's because I was delaying uh, doing that. But here we have a barracks going down. Everything looks pretty typical by Lucifron. He's getting his barracks up. And this is always a huge sign to Zerg when they can actually see if there is a tech lab going down or not. Lucifron begins to build a marine. Hey, Pro really doesn't want that tech lab to go down, but it does, of course, go down eventually. So the important thing to note here is that um, when I see this as Zerg, or in fact when most Zergs see this, they're pretty pleased because they know that there's not any sort of Hellion rush coming. They're, it's pretty predictable that it's either going to be Marauders or some kind of Reaper, which we do see right here. So the Zerg will respond by getting a whole bunch of Zerglings. Um, pretty typical kind of opening, but we're going to come back to that Zergling idea in a little bit. And this, I think, is fairly clever by Lucifron. He's building this bunker in between, so that way he can um, wall off here. But also, this is a part where Zerg likely wouldn't be scouting. Zerg, a lot of the time, would scout around this area, or would, you know, just sort of hang out in his main, but would miss this area in between. So it's a pretty clever place to throw down a bunker. Um... But one thing that's so important to note is that Reapers are very expensive on time. They're pretty cheap otherwise. They don't really cost any food. Very low on the minerals and the gas. You just need to have some. But 40 time is a very long time. It really eats into the barracks' ability to do anything else. So if you make too many Reapers early on, you need to justify their damage by a ton. So here's Lucifron just having excellent control. And this cliff here on Kulas Ravine is great to abuse. This obviously is going to be a fantastic choice um, to abuse at any point in time. Um, but the huge issue is that just don't obsess about this. Don't have your build be overly centered on this cliff. This build is going to, as we're going to see, because we're going to be watching a lot of games, is that we're going to see um, is versatile on a wide variety of maps. So Lucifron is going to abuse this a lot, but I'm interested in what Lucifron's doing back home. He's building a command center. Um, he's doing that, a lot of the reason is because this gas was stolen, but still we're going to see the same basic outline. I'm not going to worry too much about ordering yet, but see, look how awesome this cliff abuse is by Lucifron. Again, just two little old Reapers, but just abusing excellent control by Lucifron, and look at that unbelievable micro by Lucifron. I mean, just 
incredibly solid play. And now he's just getting some free shots off on this um, this here hatchery. So I am also going to open up and go to the, um, I believe the resources tab. Yep, so we're going to have the food counts up pretty frequently throughout the game. And as we see, Lucifron's doing uh, pretty good. He's ahead a little bit. Uh, and it's actually, if you open up Reapers, typically your food will be behind. Just because the Reapers, as we said, take a very long time to build and don't use much food at all. Just one. So, um, it's pretty typical to be behind with food if you do some sort of Reaper opening. So this is fantastic by Lucifron. But he ends up pulling back and he's just going to be taking out um, this Vespian Geyser, and he's building a factory. So this is already a little interesting to me. I've seen players open up Reaper, but never quite get a factory this fast. And also he's ending up getting quite a few Marauders, as we're going to see. Still a lot of harassment going on with these Reapers. Has the advantage of this Zelnaga Watchtower, he can see this. And note a lot of the stuff that Heypro's doing. Look at how Zergling Speed is nearing completion. Why is this smart? Well, for a few reasons. First of all, uh, here are the Reapers. First of all, these Reapers are going to be very easy to chase down if we get Speed Zerglings. Also, since we've seen this Tech Lab go down, our opponent will likely be building some Marauders afterwards. And Marauders are pretty pretty bad against the Zerglings. So, excellent choice overall by Lucifron uh, to do that. Uh, or excuse me, excellent choice overall by Heypro to do that follow-up with the Zergling speed. And as usual, we see Lucifron trying to get some more pot shots off, doing some good damage here to this Queen. Just incredible control. Uh, a little bit of a screw up here by Lucifron letting him get up the ramp like that. But we're just going to dash forward a little bit. We have appreciated Lucifron's harassment with the Reapers. Yeah, great. But this is a very interesting choice, getting this reactor up very quickly. Still no other barracks, and that, now he's getting a starport. But the idea is, he is going to do harassment with Reapers and force his opponent to make a lot of speed zerglings. At which point he's already going to have a ton of Hellions up. Not only to defend against those Zerglings, but to continue putting pressure on his opponent. And of course, we need to get some Marauders because they're a solid base unit for our army. And they're phenomenal against Roaches. And uh, obviously, Reapers and Hellions are pretty bad against Roaches. But Lucifron, with a 9-kill Reaper, continuing to rack them up as much as possible. So pretty nice timing by, um, by Heypro being able to bust in there. And put a little bit of hurt on right before these Hellions end up popping up. And he's repairing away, and uh, Starport's now done, so he can end up getting some Vikings. Vikings, I think, are uh, an increasingly good choice against Zerg players, because it's almost like the Corsair and Protoss vs. Zerg in the original Brood War. Because there's overlords all over the place, um, you need them to do spotting. If for any reason, if at any point in time, you don't have excellent anti-air coverage anywhere, those overlords are a gigantic vulnerability. And the Vikings can exploit that really, really nicely. So, um... I personally would think about incorporating the Vikings just because it makes me feel like a badass to begin Reaper Harass, straight into Hellion Harass, straight into uh, Viking Harass, and still having those Marauders around to be able to stay alive and do some decent hurt on the enemy. So I'm going to bounce right back here to the main screen. To the main screen. And it didn't lag. Hooray. That's fantastic. <laughs> I am just delighted that it's... No, it's... It's lagging out on me, but, you know, no big deal. We're going to finish this game regardless. This frames per second issue is something that's been happening with uh, StarCraft 2 lately. Um, it's a little memory leak that it's been having. I mean, the, the camera's fine, but the StarCraft 2, if I uh, try to adjust it just a little bit, is going to... Um, yeah, it's going to stabilize at around 16 frames per second, so no big deal. Uh, the game's still completely understandable at this rate. Um, but it'll pop right back up when I do the, the, the next game. So... Hey, Pro already has a lot of Zerglings up. How is he going to follow it up? Um, well, he's getting triple gas. You know, he's pretty much been relying on just one geyser for the time being. And that's okay. But, you know, it's all because of the fact that we've been forced to make all these Zerglings to deal with this gigantic harassment that's been going on nonstop by our opponent. You know, we've had to make uh, cuts on drones early on. And now we're trying to replace those drones. And look at these Mara or these Hellions just roasting everything. Really cool little transitioning. And he's just going to continue making Hellions. And now he's going to back up and begin adding on all these extra barracks. And he's just going to continue fairly normally. Uh, and all will be fine and well and good. So, overall, very nice play by Lucifron. We really like this sort of transitioning action. And the thing is, I'm not actually going to finish this game. First of all, because it's lagging out a little bit. Um, but most importantly, because um, it's that 
transitioning from the start that I think is so key. That is, oh, look, StarCraft is now rebooting on me, so I'm going to drag it off to this screen, so that way I can actually put in my password in peace <laughs> without displaying it over the internet. Um, but what's really important about that, what's particularly juicy, is that transition of Reapers into Hellion Marauder, which is a little funky, and then also getting that Starport early on, I like quite a bit. It, it's unusual, but it has so many strengths. The first one is that with the Reaper Harass, we can do so much damage, and then the follow-up, any follow-up with Marauders is pretty typical by Terrans, just because they need some way in order to stay alive against Roaches, so there it is, that's the one, re you know, the easiest transition straight out of the uh, Reapers. We already have the Tech Lab. But then getting the Hellions, I think, is is the really nice touch that Lucifron put on this build. The fact that um, that's not a structure you end up getting very quickly afterwards. Most players are going to be getting the Barracks, but the Hellion works out great, not just as a unit to defend, but it opens up the Starport tech. I mean, so often you'll see players have to rely almost exclusively on... Um, tons and tons and tons of barracks level units when in fact they should be doing some sort of transition um to something else to you know something a little bit better for them um so here we have hey pro spawning in the bottom left um we do have in the top right we have lucifron spawning and uh getting a little bit low fps how tragic wish i could fix that um desperately wish i could fix that let me actually adjust this viewing window and see if that helps it whatsoever um, hey, there we go. That's helping. Hey, fantastic. Thank you, Flash Media Live Encoder. That seems to have done a pretty decent job. No, it's crashing again. Oh, well, I'll keep this, uh, this counter offline for now. Let's just go ahead and remove this, and there we go. Thank God, finally popping back to normal. So he's building his, um, supply depot at his, uh, at his ramp. Pretty typical. Uh, a lot of times we have fear about some sort of Baneling bust. However, if we're opening up with those early Reapers, we have the opportunity to see our opponent doing that, to put pressure on him, and even enough time to build another factory behind here and to wall ourselves off. Because, I mean, really, if we can put a bunker with a few Reapers in there, we're going to be in reasonably decent shape. So here's uh, a pretty fun little trick that a lot of players have been doing where they basically patrol directly on their SCV and just tweak them out while he's building the barracks. So let's speed things up a little bit. Um, it's so cool to see Lucifron do this so many times in a row against Heypro because a lot of times players cop out, you know? They'll, they'll, they'll have one build, but then they'll sort of fade out on it, you know? They'll do their one build and then they'll go, ah, oh, well, I don't want them to predict what it is I'm doing, and they'll just completely abandon it. Uh, so I really love the fact that Lucifron has stabilized his build quite a bit uh, and made it a lot more reasonable. So um, very, very excellent play right there. So um, getting the orbital command, everything's pretty normal right there. Um, same build, same old, same old. And he's scouting his opponent. Hey, Pro's going to be doing a pretty similar build uh, as well. So we're going to continue things along. Yeah, here comes the Reaper again. Now, we're seeing a little bit of an adjustment here. Uh, the big broad ideas were what we focused on initially. But um, what I really like is the fact that he's getting this second gas so, so, so much earlier. That is uh, a big change because in the previous game, you'll recall that the opponent was... Um, his opponent was having to deal with... Uh, Jesus, sorry, losing my train of thought. You'll recall from last game that hey, Pro stole the gas, and that gas deal really ended up getting in the way of what he wanted to do, which, as it turns out, was getting this factory a lot earlier on. And I think this is a pretty awesome opening by Lucifron to, to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to see the Reapers pop out, and, and look at the timing of this. Look at the... So we have these minerals up here. Let's just open up the resource tab, and right when he hits 150, 100, he can build a factory. Phenomenal timing right there by Lucifron. And the Reapers are popping out pretty normally right now. And he's just going to poke around. I love this popping up here to the Zelnaga Watchtower. I think it's a big mistake that he didn't end up passing by that area. Um, see, already notice that Lucifron's a little bit behind on food because, again, those Reapers are so low on the food. But popping up this way, much more surprising for the Zerg. Going to be doing nice micro. And again, so many of these maps have a cliff like this on Lost Temple. There's a high ground by the Natural Expansion. At Kulos Ravine, there's a cliff directly overlooking the expansion. There's all just sorts of good stuff 
um, that you can do with these Reapers, as long as you just look for the good terrain to do it with. A lot of players will try to attack directly from this front, but you'll notice Lucefron doesn't even give that a shot. He's actually just going to back way out here, and then probably go um, into, the me or into the front, I guess, but it looks like he's going to be poaching either towards this cliff up here, or just towards the ramp. No matter what, he wants to be nearby a cliff. Look at Lucifron convincing Haypro to, you know, throw his Zerglings in the wrong direction. Meanwhile, in Haypro's main, or excuse me, Lucifron's main, we see that that factory is getting a reactor as normal. We see a Marauder coming out now, after that third Reaper. And a Command Center is going down. Same old, same old. Very, very good stuff going on here by Lucifron. And also, because of the range of the Reapers, we can do a great deal of harassment that'll be super, super effective. Always a really, really good technique um, to just take a few extra shots at the Queen. A lot of times people only tend to deal with Reapers as though they do damage to light, you know, against everything else they do negligible damage. However, they do a pretty good amount of damage. I mean, 8 damage per shot and they shoot pretty fast. If you get a decent number of hits off, you can easily take down Queens. So here is the factory out, getting a little supply blocked here. No big deal, it happens. But then just doing usual sorts of cliff walking. Gonna take a few shots off and then easily bounce right back down. And this is just so strong to just do this sort of stuff. You kind of are forced to do this back and forth action with the Zerglings. And if your player is good, as Lucifron clearly is good right here, you kind of just have to deal with it. This is getting a little bit over bold, I think. I think could have taken a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother of an arc, losing a few too many um, hits there on the Reapers. But still note how good this is. This is great, right? Just these three Reapers, right? Look, this has two kills, this has six kills, there's a ton of kills just on Zerglings and drones. Uh, I mean, we do have a little bit of wasted economy here by Zerg. I mean, the drone count would ideally be a lot higher. It is still pretty, uh, pretty high hanging out there at that um, 28 count. And we have the Command Center now finishing, but look at this transition right into the Hellions. This is just so great. And then once he sees that there's not that many Zerglings there, he's just going to uh, slam out a bunch of barracks, put a little hurt on. Very, very slick transitioning going on by Lucifron. Really like it quite a lot. Quite a good transition going on right here. So, Lucifron adding on his Orbital Command, or at least he should be pretty soon here. And look at all these Zerglings that Haypro made. These Zerglings were definitely not something that Haypro would have liked to make quite this many of. And they're already Hellions, eagerly prepared to roast any of them that end up popping up. So getting tech labs everywhere. And notice we're having a little bit of a gas surplus. I think this is a little bit of a misstep. It's great that Lucifron got these two geysers early on, but pop these two guys right out of the geyser afterwards, because you are pretty low on money, especially when you expand this early as Terran. So there's no reason to be wasting six guys in gas when you're already at 512 gas. But, I mean, the overall process is fantastic. I mean, look at this. Right when that Reaper Harass finishes, we have a whole bunch of Hellions ready to push out. Um, and he's continuing to add on a bunch of Marauders. But unfortunately for him, Haypro is good, so there is a Spire that is already uh, underway right here. So Haypro's going to need to make absolutely certain he doesn't lose to something like that. A Baneling Nest going down. Love this choice of getting this Baneling Nest, because you can generally deal with a decent amount of Marauders if they come at you with just Zerglings, but if there's, a, if there's any number of Marines, you're going to be in for a little bit of trouble. And now look at this brilliant little switch by Lucifron. He gets a Starport. And that reactor that was originally for all those Hellions, he just gives to the starport. So we can start really pumping out the medevacs. And with the factory, he's getting a tech lab because he's going to be getting some Thors. So that way he can have a solid mobile anti-air unit and continue to push. I mean, this entire build has aggression start to finish. And by the way, let's just rewind and appreciate that little moment right there by Lucifron. I mean, this is the sort of thing that is subtle, but look at this. Lucifron was focused enough to see this Zergling shoot and then immediately move back. I mean, that's just phenomenal focus and watching of the minimap to be able to pull off that sort of play. Absolutely excellent play there by Lucifron. So here comes the Armory, and now we're seeing the gas get a little bit lower, but still I think that, you know, it's better to pop the guys out of the gas geyser because, you know, we're still having excess gas here. And here comes the Thor, going to be out almighty, and be putting quite a lot of hurt on. Well, actually, let me just say that 
it's not that he's absolutely making the j- biggest blunder in the world by not pulling guys off gas. I just think that it's the sort of thing that must be considered in order to smooth out this sort of build. Because especially in StarCraft II, where you have six guys getting gas instead of three, that becomes a much more significant consideration of how to manipulate those minerals. And it's pretty much just a Marauder Thor composition coming out right now. Pretty much an anti-roach play with one Thor. I mean, I kind of would like a little bit more anti-air, perhaps in the form of some Vikings. Um, just one Thor seems like you're cutting it a little bit close. Just a little bit. And we're going to see that Hey Pro is doing something much different this game, you know. Getting some Zerglings out, uh, but still going to end up having a lot of struggle here. But, I mean, look at how much damage those Mutalists are doing. I mean, even with the Thor that does such serious hurt. I mean, without any anti-air, I mean, Luce Franz encountering a little bit of, of, of trouble here. So let's pretend, for the time being, that we're Lucifron, and that was just a practice game on a ladder. This isn't a series that we're playing against Hey Pro in the finals of a major tournament. It's just practice that we're trying to do. The thing that I would learn from that is it got a little bumpy when I was trying to get that many barracks that early on. Um, but I still like that transition of getting the Starport and then getting the Tech Lab at the factory so I can actually get a Thor. I do need those Hellions early on. There's a lot of fancy tech switching going on there. But still, the anti-air threat is a little bit big, and it, it was neglected a little bit by Lucifron. So we're actually going to um, pop right into the third game. I'm just going to bounce this, uh, this game off the main screen so we can log back in. But... Um, we're going to be watching a third and probably a fourth game. Um, it's currently 7.50 right now. But since we started, like, what, 20 minutes late, thanks to all those tech issues, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go a little over today with my usual planned time. Um, and for any of you who just tuned in, I want to say that, once again, all my videos are going to be uploaded to um, day9tv.blip.tv. They're a... Uh, Excellent video hosting site, and after a while I'll be able to distribute that so you can get an RSS feed for iTunes, so it'll be updated anytime I upload any videos, and you can get it through a bazillion different methods thanks to Blip, so thankfully that'll be up really, really soon. So we're going to go ahead and load up the third game between them. This next map is going to be on Steps of War, which, as you might imagine, is pretty good for this build because your Reapers get there a lot faster. You need to worry about Zerglings a little bit more, but as long as Lucifron doesn't lose his gas early on and can get that factory out, like, mondo fast, he'll be fine. He'll be able to get the Hellions up and be able to put on more relentless pressure against his opponent. So we're actually going to come back over to the main screen. So there we are at the main screen. And uh, this will be a little bit choppy at first, but... Um, it will naturally smooth back out over time, so it's not going to be the biggest deal in the world. So we're going to go ahead and quit this, and there we are. We're just going to bounce right back up to those high frame per second. I said high frames per second. Oh well, let me adjust this a little bit. Anytime this window gets a little bit skewed outside of the stream window, it ends up freaking out. So I'm going to make some adjustments to this. And hey, I really wish that the patch hadn't happened so recently because then I wouldn't have to constantly log out and log back in again. Uh, that would have easily smoothed things out by a ton. Uh, but either way, we're going to go ahead and just watch this in a little bit of a slideshow style until it ends up smoothing itself back out. So Lucifron is getting his supply depot at the front. Um, might have to end this a little bit early. I'm going to just check one thing real fast on the settings. This is the uh, good old... Oh, there it is. So that's actually quite a bit a ways outside of that window. And this is a little bit too far that way. So maybe that helped, maybe that didn't. <laughs> Story of my life. So we're going to speed things up right now. Uh, you know, actually I'm going to call this Day 9 Daily just a little bit early because these tech issues are... A little bit too much of the commentary, and I'd prefer to just have those sorted out. But hey, it's only my second stream on Ustream, and I'm still sorting junk out. So, um, there's the good old little patrol throwing down the barracks once again. Um, now this is a little interesting by Heypro, sending out two workers to harass this. I mean, this is some pretty serious angry drone action and managing to take out an SCV. Uh, this is... Kind of a cool adjustment by Heypro, but we're going to see how Lucifron is able to deal with it without that big of a concern. Let me actually... Yeah, 
Nah, I'm just gonna keep it. Uh, I'm having a huge debate as to whether I should reboot this or not, but, um, you know, shit happens. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be this way when I end up streaming the uh, other cool events that are going on this weekend. So, for instance, uh, I'm doing the Razor Domination cast tomorrow, and I'm going to be doing the uh, GG, uh, what is it, the Team Asia versus Team Euro cast Saturday morning with Greetorps. So that should be fantastic. So Lucifron doing a little bit earlier of a wall in. He's getting a marine. He's getting his gas stolen. He's he's under quite a lot of pressure. Um, but let's see the way that Lucifron ends up dealing with this. It's gonna be a pretty good play. Um, he's going to be up against a pretty normal pool timing. But look at this. He just makes a marine and then immediately builds his tech lab. Oh, did he actually make a marine? He definitely started it. No, he didn't even let it finish. He just pleasantly built his um tech lab the moment he didn't see an expansion up and now it's his turn to be a little bit counter aggressive so despite all that early pressure he just comfortably walled in to make sure he didn't die to anything goofy and then went right on back to making a whole bunch of um uh went right on back to making a whole bunch of oh my god i think i know what the problem was my windows was activating in the background so that is a little bit annoying that it just decided to do that without telling me I'll have to be a little bit more watchful for Windows 7, just trying to let do things to my computer that I didn't actually want it to do. So Lucifron just walled in pretty happily and dandily. Nothing uh, too extreme. It didn't do a gigantic major change to this harassment early on with the drones. Just pretty much stuck to what he was doing before. And again, we're seeing the same sort of pattern. If he gets his gas stolen, he's going to end up building his command center a little bit early. Otherwise, he's going to be getting his factory out a little bit earlier. And that makes sense, because if your opponent steals your gas, he's investing uh, a good bit of money into that. So um, it, it ends up evening out the fact that your factory is just a little bit more delayed. So we continue to see Reapers being produced, and it looks like Lucifron's backing up to go ahead and take out this gas geyser in his main. And uh, will he be making the factory? Yes, he will. Uh, I cheated a little bit, because I have seen these games. But the, the thing to note is that still it's the same basic structure. Getting all these Reapers and then transitioning directly into Hellions makes perfect sense because of the fact that our opponents are generally making so many Zerglings. And who said that StarCraft II had no micro in it, right? Just having these Reapers constantly bounce around, you need so much focus here. And then having all these Hellions bounce around to do even more damage. And there, finally, um, Lucifron's able to kill it off. Doesn't even need to lift the wall in. He can just happily go ahead right into... Uh, bouncing down those cliffs. And the thing to note is that it's still just three Reapers. Three Reapers is a pretty important amount. It's one-shotting drones. Um, and then just bouncing right back into Marauders. Is he getting the Concussive Shell? I'm certain he'll be getting it uh, pretty soon here. There's the Reactor going down as well. Building the Orbital Command before he moves. Very good play when you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable. When you're feeling a little bit like you can't quite get into your opponent's base. Um to find out what he's doing, feeling a little bit of pressure. Very smart to get in there and just do a little bit of uh, orbital command action first. Now look at this. Look at this very smart move that Lucifron did. He went up here and a lot of players would see the queen and just be like, attack, and then suicide to try to kill off all the drones immediately. I think that's a bad play. I think it's smart that Lucifron first bounced up and then went right back down the cliff. He was being a little bit cautious with these Reapers and now he's just finding the nearest cliff to abuse. And look at how many Zerglings Haypro has made. Meanwhile, we're seeing Lucifron get ready to build those Hellions. Why is this an orbital command? Well, we can clearly see now that with all of these Zerglings, this expansion would not be safe at all. These Hellions really do need to get started first. So, some more nice control by Lucifron. Just doing a little scoot and run. Shoot and run. Pretty typical stuff going on right now. And so we're going to see Lucifron move right on over here uh, to his expansion. And still yet not lifting these supply depots. I really like this choice of getting the concussive shell. Makes the Marauders a lot more effective against the Marines, especially with the combination of the Hellions in that mix. Now watch the way that Lucifron's going to be able to hold this off. Yeah, sure, there's a bunch of Zerglings coming in there. And it's unfortunate that the Zerglings were able to get both those mules right away. That's actually pretty serious hurt. But I mean, with these Hellions, easiest thing in the world. 
And these Marauders, once they get the Concussive Shell, those will never be able to retreat nearly as easily. And this is kind of cool, he's getting a second factory. So we're starting to see that this game's beginning, Reaper, can transition into this middle, Reaper Marauder, pretty nicely. And then we have a lot of options. We've seen Lucifron get a Starport very quickly. We've seen Lucifron get a bunch of Barracks really quickly. Now we're seeing Lucifron get some Thors very quickly, so of course I always approve of that sort of play. And look at this. Again, Lucifron has the opportunity to be aggressive. Why is he moving out now? Well, Concussive Shell just finished. Very easy upgrade to get. Uh, spine Crawlers take forever to build. And look at this. This is four Marauders and four Hellions. And the way that Lucifron's going to be able to control this, so incredibly strong. And look, all these Zerglings were originally made because Hey Pro was dealing with this Reaper Harass. And now that the Reaper Harass is done, this composition is just going to marauder his army. Like, he's going to just get demolished. I mean, very, very, very good play um, by by uh, Lucifron there. And hey, look at that. Now we get the frames per second back to maximum strength. So, um, going to try to figure out that issue. It looks like Windows was updating stuff. So, hopefully that doesn't do that sort of thing in the future. But, good game. And you know what? Since I'm feeling extra, extra festive, we're going to see if we can actually get this fourth game to load up. And this is, of course, a spoiler-free coverage of this tournament. I'm going directly in order, so if you haven't seen the games, you get the delight of getting to see them right now. Um, I'm going to try to do this fourth game right now, so that way it'll end up being about the usual length, which is about 50 minutes for uh, an episode. And again, none of this would have happened if it weren't for the fact that I have to constantly log out and log back into Battle.net. How unfair. Oh, life is just hard on me doing all my StarCraft casts. So the, the next game that they're going to be playing, and let's see if Lucifron does something similar, um, he is going to be playing on Scrap Station. So it's a little bit more open of a map, um, especially with the adjustment with those destructible rocks. I think Reapers are a lot stronger. There's a lot less good circulation for units to just wander around and surround the the uh the reapers so let's go ahead and bounce back over here let's pull this on over to the main screen and it is happily loading at 31 frames per second so hopefully we won't see too many drops coming up here yeah look at how smooth that is oh that's so smooth for me that is just delightful so once my um bit rate ends up popping back up here we will get full frameage uh but we have hey pro spawning here at the right position we see Lucifron spawning at the north position. Pretty typical stuff right now. Um, looks like they have 30 observers in there, which is lagging. No big deal. This is a little bit longer of a game. We're just going to focus on that initial start action that's going on by Lucifron. Just those opening stages. And I'm going to uh, bounce back over to my stream channel, so that way I can end up getting some information from the chat to see if, um, if there's any questions that we can take. Uh, at the end of this. So um, we do see that the usual build is going on. This is great. And by the way, if everyone can hear me and see everything nice and well in the chat, definitely say the word foot. I love hearing the word foot in the middle of the cast. That is always fantastic news to hear. So um, definitely going to take some questions after this. So phenomenal. Yes, things are working great. Nifty thrifty. So um building the orbital command right now. Oh god, I love how smooth that looks now, finally. So getting the second gas super early. That's a really early second gas. Looks like Lucifron might be doing some sort of deviation from his build. Alternatively, he could just be delaying this tech lab by a, a little marginal tiny amount. So that way he can end up getting this marine out to kill off Hey Pro's Overlord. I mean, even if you're doing the same build a bunch of games in a row, it's still valuable to throw your opponent off by trying to prevent any Overlord from getting in there at any point in time. So doing a little bit of uh, shots off right there. That's fantastic. So, uh, throwing up the factory down right now. It looks like we're having a slightly different build by Lucifron. Let's see if we see any similarities. Oh, well, this is interesting. We're having a tech lab go down uh, after the factory. So, hopefully, we'll end up seeing the same sort of Reaper harass directly into, um, directly into uh, some sort of maybe aggression. No, looks like he is pulling his barracks back and getting a reactor. Completely different build. Absolutely zany build going on by Lucifron. Generally, this is something that you see um, players do when they want to do some sort of huge Hellion harass. Yep, there's the Infernal Pre-Igniter going down. Just love um, 
this mid-game use of Hellions by Lu Lucifron to deal with these big Zergling numbers. A little bit worse on this map because these destructible debris are here. So that is always going to get in the way of your Hellion harass. But, you know, uh, on the old versions and even still on this one because the ramp is just so huge. It's definitely strong here as well. So here I have a bunch of Hellions popping out. He's going to be able to get a super early harassment on. And I'm curious what his follow-through is going to be. See if we can get... Whoops, sorry. I'm just going to readjust this window a little bit. We're going to see if there's any sort of um, connections we can make between this game and Lucifron's other games. So, uh, looks like that is what killed my frames per second. Whatever it was that I did, I have no idea. Uh, I'm just going to continue to adjust things around as my StarCraft freezes. Phenomenal. And here's Lucifron's Hellion Harass moving right across. With the Infernal Preigniter, you just kill Zerglings so much more easily. Um, which is why so often players like Heypro will favor getting roaches in this particular circumstance just to block this ramp area. This is a pretty common opening on Scrap Station to expand here really early, get the two queens, and then just bust out some roaches. No big deal. We can easily defend both. Uh-oh, unless that happens. And now with just a few Hellions in here, this is going to be serious hurt. Ugh, roast those guys so fast. But I'm curious what this follow-up is going to be by Lucifron. Doesn't look like he has any intention of transitioning out of this. Um, this is always a little bit dangerous of a build to do if you don't start transitioning soon enough. Uh, first of all, you don't need this second gas that early on. Um, you need it to start this build, but you don't need it to continue with this build. So you can easily pop those guys off and be pretty comfortable with that. Um, more Hellions coming in. Hellions are actually pretty decent against Roaches if you have good micro. You can end up doing a lot of damage just staying constantly out of range. And this is something I never, ever recommend. This sort of suicide to, oh my god, I hope I can kill off drones, may have just been a misstep where Lucifron wasn't watching. Because now he absolutely desperately needs to get that tech lab up. Desperately needs to get some Marauders out. Yep, there's the second barracks going down. Now, there is a connection we can make between these games. Um, I'm just going to mention it after we end up watching this Hellion harass. Because it's always fun to see drones cook. Um, so, the thing to note is that... Marauder Hellion is a great composition in the mid game. Lucifron has done this consistently throughout this series and is also even doing it here now. But the huge problem is that here it's more of desperation by Lucifron. He's not going to be able to maintain any sort of aggression. Because look how many roaches Haypro has. If he tries to bounce up here, he's just going to get repelled so easily. And then look, Haypro just sort of spreads out a little bit. No big deal. And now we have a whole bunch of Marauders that are trying to get made in desperation. And even look, Lucifron is building a third barracks right now just because he needs to be able to combat that huge amount of roaches that are coming out right now. And if we were looking at Lucifron's old build where he uh, got these Hellions after he did some sort of Reaper harass, the result would be that um, Lucifron would already have an expansion up. I mean, the roaches might be coming, but not nearly in these sorts of numbers. Uh, there, it would be so, so, so much easier for Lucifron to deal with. He would only have one factory as a liability, so we could easily throw down a second or third barracks if he was doing his old build. But here, it's just a little bit hard when you have two factories already built so early on, and there is one Hellion going down without much of a fight. Something that's a little bit um, cooler is to go for a lot of Hellions early on, but then also to get Vikings, because, you know, your opponent's going to be making Roaches largely to deal with the Hellions. So you can get some Vikings out to mess with his compositions a little bit. And see, look, more suiciding like this. Very clear desperation move. Trying to get lined up so he can do maximum damage, but has only ever really gotten two or three drones at a time. And there are all the Hellions gone, taking out about, you know, three, four hundred minerals worth of... Uh, pain. And look at this, Hey Pro, building up so many queens. Such a brilliant play to get that many queens. And even another one here, because he's seen his opponent get all this tech up. He knows he's making all these roaches. Wants to make sure he does not die to any sort of air. And this is going to be over pretty soon. Like the Siege Tanks, Siege Tanks do a ridiculous amount of damage against armored units when they're unsieged. So, uh, definitely unsieged tanks is a good option to consider when you have these um, factories and barracks lying around. Uh, but for now, I am just going to happily wrap up this Day 9 Daily that has pretty much been a uh, train wreck start to finish. want to make sure that uh should get this out of the way, get it up on on demand so that way everything's fine and well. But uh, since these frames are looking pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and just happily take a handful of questions here. Um, so let's just go ahead and do this real fast. So uh, 
Let's just get this out of the way. Let's just put this all behind us. So, uh, oh, someone had a name with kimchi in it. I would love to take that question. So, Major Lee Pistov says, in, um, all right, well, if you send your question more than once, then it'll actually get shot off the stream. So, that's why I lost that Major's question. So, just put it up once and then be very quiet. Um, so, By Never says, Day 9, don't you think Lucifron based all of his games on harassing his opponent? Isn't this bad, like a do-or-die strategy? Shouldn't Terran expand uh, and make the, the old bio? I, I don't think that that's the case. I definitely think that it wasn't that Lucifron was just trying to harass all game long. It's that he gave himself a lot of opportunities to harass all game long, which is something that is characteristic of really every good build in StarCraft 1. Players are constantly trying to figure out ways to keep non-stop pressure on their opponent. Let's take Protoss versus Zerg. The Protoss early expands and gets one gateway, and then he immediately starts pressuring with some of those first Zealots, some of those first um, Dragoons he gets out of his one gateway, and then he immediately gets Corsairs, and he's trying to poke in there. He's not doing all-out attacks. He's just poking in there, trying to do a little bit of damage with the Corsair, trying to check out what's up. Um, and then after this, he can move out with a timing push with a whole bunch of Zealots and Templar. There's just constant opportunities to be aggressive all game long. Now, if this Protoss player encounters a bunch of Zerglings with those early um, Zealots and Dragoons, he just backs off. If he encounters Scourge or Hydralis with the Corsair, he just backs off. If he encounters a huge amount of Lurkers and he doesn't have Observers yet, he backs off. But in all those cases, if his opponent doesn't have all those proper defenses set up, he immediately loses. So in these circumstances, in those first games, we saw Lucifron able to do tons and tons and tons and tons of damage with this harassment while still being safe the whole time. And when it didn't end up working out too well, just happily backed off and it was fine. I think that in the fourth game, it was clearly a do or die strategy. It wasn't harassment. It was, oh my God, I need to win this game immediately because this is going more and more and more downhill. So Happy Hydra says, Day 9, do you think uh, it's worth it to get an early spine crawler in your main? Move it to your expo to defend against Reaper Harass. The problem is that um, spine crawlers don't defend nearly as much area as you'd think they would. It's pretty bad how much area they actually end up covering. Um, so for instance, if you do build a spine crawler in your main, sure it'll end up repelling it a little bit, but he can still pick off the edges, still shoot at your queen, still shoot at the drones that are trying to mine gas. So you have to end up positioning it in a very um, you know specific side, like maybe you can have it to cover your gas. Uh, but really, zerglings and just losing a lot of zerglings is the best way to deal with um, that sort of early reaper harass. And then because if you get the second queen up early on, you can just jam out a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of uh, drones after the fact. So I'm going to take one more question just so I can end this stuff. Um, so let's just see this. Um, do, 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 do. Um, oh yeah, so Marcinius says, after the early game reaper hellion harass, I feel like I'm forced to respond to the zerg's tech. Is there any way to deal with that? So what I would say is that um, the best thing to consider is the fact that the more aggressive you are, the fewer options your opponent really has. So that is the best way to keep from being this adaptive player who's trying to respond and worry about too much and forcing your opponent to be the one who's worrying. Um, I do like Vikings a lot because not only do you get to scout and can you stereotype your, your unit composition a little bit um, way far in the direction you need to, but also you can kill off a ton of overlords and Vikings are really good against roaches. They do a ton of damage against roaches. So I think that that is another really strong follow-up so that way you deal with that sort of air vulnerability that you have. Um, but really, non-stop pressure against Zerg has always been the best way to deal with um, Zerg players, you know, in StarCraft 1, turning out to be the way in StarCraft 2 as well, um, especially with that queen mechanic where you can end up just vomiting so much larvae. You really need to be barreling down his throat. So you know what? That is going to wrap up today's cast. It has just been a little bit choppy, so um, Mondo, sorry about that, but I'm going to go ahead and fix that up. Um, before my next stream coming up, which is going to be tomorrow morning doing the Razor Domination cast. And I'm also going to be doing the uh, Asia vs. Euro show match series hosted by GG.net. So um, that's going to wrap it up. Hope you guys tune into all those. Thank you so much, and see ya.